and um, welcome to my channel. I'm Kath and my channel is Made by Kath Craft. Thank you very much for joining me today. Um, on my channel I love to talk about um, all things crafty related. Um, I love sewing, I also dabble in a bit of knitting um, and I love sharing what I've been making as well as fabrics I've purchased. Um, so if you're interested in hearing more about that I'd love you to join me um, and love it if you'd press the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you can be notified of future vlogs. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about some of my August makes um, and I'm actually going to split this vlog into two because I made quite a few things in August. I wasn't really expecting to because we had a week away and it's obviously the summer holidays so the children have been at home and they've been quite busy and <laughs> I've been quite busy with them. Um, but actually I've really been enjoying crafting in the evenings um, and it kind of keeps me sane really I think having something to do that's just for me. So I really enjoyed um, doing that and I can't wait to share what I've been making. Um, sorry this video is a little bit later than um, it normally would be. Um, I kind of held off filming it because my children went back to school. Um, my son started last Thursday and my daughter went into reception, so her first time at school um, on Monday. Um, so I was thinking this week, yay, I'll have a little bit of time um, to myself to film, although I will be sad to have them gone. But actually, my son's been um, off poorly the last three days. Um, he's fine, he just had a nasty head cold and he wasn't himself. Um, and we had lots of fun at home playing board games, And um, but now he's full of beans and he's back today. So I thought I'll settle down and show you some of what I've been making in August. Before um, I start talking about what I've made in August, I thought I'd share what I'm wearing today. So it's um, a lovely um, sunny day today actually, it's quite warm, so I thought I'd um, have, have, take the chance to wear one of my more summery makes from this year. Um, and this one, I think, I think I might have shared this dress on one of my early vlogs, but I'm not sure. Um, but I made it in early summer, I think, and um, it's um, the Hinterland dress by So Liberated. Um, I'll put up a picture of the full dress so you can see it, because it's kind of hard to see from this camera angle. But um, yeah, it's a Hinterland dress with a placket, um, button placket down to here. And then I added waist ties at the back to cinch it in. And then I, it's kind of like, a, you can't really see on the camera, it looks maybe a bit black, but it's a navy blue check. And I added little yellow buttons for a pop of colour, which I thought were quite fun. Um, so yeah, the, the cotton linen blend it is from Sew Me Sunshine. And um, it's a bit more substantial, the, the fabric's a bit more weighty than um, quite a lot of my summery makes. But because it's cotton and linen, it's really breathable. And I've got so much wear out of this dress this summer. I really like it. I actually went on to make two more Hinterland dresses this year because I like the style of it so much. I think it's quite kind of classic um, and it works with lots of things. And actually thinking about it, I could probably um, still wear this in winter with maybe a cardigan and some thick tights. So I might take advantage of that because I do really love it. And I love how linen can be sort of so cool in summer, but also quite cozy in winter. So that's what I'm wearing today, my Hinterland dress. But um, now let me move on to talking about um, what I've been making in August. So my first make I wanted to share with you is actually a dress. Um, I actually thought in August I wasn't going to make too many dresses because I've got a fair few in my wardrobe and I thought I might focus on a few other areas that I maybe needed more clothes. But um, I saw this pattern come out early this summer and I just couldn't resist. Um, and I'll show you which of what the pattern is. And it's in this lovely pattern envelope that I got from Pattern Trace. I think they're really nice, um, particularly for the, um, this was a um, PDF pattern, so I've got the sort of um, large um, AO copy shop size pattern pieces behind, so it's just quite a nice size for storing those. I like these pattern trace envelopes. And it's this dress here. It's the um, plum dress by Kokowara Crafts. I always find it really hard to say the Kokowara, but <laughs> this is it. Um, and I just couldn't resist, um, mainly because I just love this um, ruffle sleeve detail. Um, I think before I started sewing, I would never have considered wearing a ruffle, and now I'm a, like a total ruffle convert. Um, but yeah, so um, um, I've had it made a couple of uh, Kokowara Crafts um, dresses before, which I think I might have just made one, the honeycomb dress. And the instructions are always really good. And I like they're a little bit quirky. And, um, and I've seen a few beautiful versions of this um, dress, so I just couldn't resist it. Um, and it's actually a very reasonable price as well for the PDF. I can't remember how much it was, but I thought it was a really reasonable price. But um, Anyway, so I decided to make this version here with the ruffle short sleeves um, and a slightly, I think I, there's a longer skirt version, a shorter skirt, and my versions ended up somewhere in between. I didn't want it super mini, but I didn't want it too long either. And it's got a really nice detail of a button down back. Um, and I wasn't sure if buttons down the back would bother me and kind of, um, you know, say if I'm sitting down on the sofa, if they dig in, but actually um, having made it and worn it, I haven't found they bothered me at all, so I was pleasantly surprised. 
And so, yeah, let me show you the dress. Um, I'll put a picture up of um, me, the full length of the dress so you can see it. And I also wanted to show you a few of the little details um, of the dress that I made. So I made it in this um, beautiful um, double gauze from Minerva. It's quite like a bright blue colour. I thought it was really pretty. And I do often, I am often drawn to prints, um, but I really like the idea of doing this um, dress in a plain fabric, just so that you could really um, see the features, like the ruffles and the buttons. Um, and I wanted to show you yeah, a few of my little features. I really enjoyed um, sewing this um, garment quite slowly and taking my time. And then what I decided to do was, yeah, to make a few little features. Um, so firstly, um, the neck is finished with bias binding, um, which I think is a really nice way to finish um, a woven neck. Um, and gives a really nice um, finish. And I decided to make my own bias binding using um, some leftover scraps. Um, and these are scraps from my um, Zadie jumps, Zadie play suit, which I made um, earlier in the summer. And it's a viscose linen fabric. So um, it's quite nice and sturdy for the bias binding. Um, so that's my bias bound neckline. And I thought it complemented the color of the dress nicely. I also added um, pink buttons. And um, if you can see, I added pink stitching as well for the button placket. Um, so, and, and also pink stitching around the buttonholes. Um, so I had a bit of fun there. And then, um, oh, I can't see it's this round. This dress has nice pockets. And I also made the pockets um, in this contrasting um, fabric for my um, Zadie jumpsuit. So I was really pleased because I love this fabric and I was really pleased to use it. Um, so you can't see those little details when I'm wearing it because they're kind of hidden on the inside. But I really um, like that they're there and I really enjoyed um, adding them in. Um, and um, I also thought for the double gauze, because double gauze can um, sort of stretch quite um, badly when sewing, I thought using maybe a slightly um, more structured fabric for the um, bias binding would stop that to get a nice even finish on the neckline. So I'm pleased with how it turned out and you'll be able to see from the picture how it all looks. And then I also added um, waist ties to pull in the dress because it's quite an oversized look. I think I went for the smallest size. Let's have a look. Yeah, I went for the smallest size, size one on this pattern, which actually is smaller than my measurements. It's a bust 31, waist 23, hips 31. And I'm, um, I'm nowhere um, near <laughs> waist 23 inch or hips 31 inch. My waist is about 26 and my hips are about 36. But the finished garment measurements are um, waist 38 and hips 50 inch for size one. So I thought, well, there's plenty of room there and I didn't want it too oversized. And that turned out fine and cinched in. I really like the look. And I'll also pop up a picture of how I styled it. And um, I wore it at the weekend out and I wore it with a denim jacket and some trainers. And I'll put a picture of how I styled it so you can see how it looks. Because I wasn't sure at first when I made it if it would be um, a little bit sort of formal or like fancy looking with the ruffle sleeves but I was quite pleased that actually it can be it can work dressed down too and the sleeves are just so cute I think with a little ruffle and they were lots of fun to put in so that's my first make um and the instructions on the Kokoara crafts patterns are always really great like I said so it was a real pleasure to sew um I'm not sure if I'll make another one um with the ruffle because I think it's quite um a statement sleeve and I think if I had a few of them they probably look quite similar but um maybe in a pattern fabric I might be tempted because I think it might look quite different or maybe with something really drapey like a viscose it would look lovely so I'll have to have a think about that maybe for next summer but that was my first make so my make number two actually also utilized some um scrap fabric I had um in my stash um I don't like having too much fabric um, hanging about um, and so I do like to use what I've got and um, I made um, earlier this summer the Georgie dress by Sew Over It and I've got the pattern here so you can just see what that looks like with like a wrap bodice and a long skirt and I'll put a picture of, of the dress I made um, and this dress um, when I when I um, got the pattern it does say um, it needed quite a lot of fabric and um, I made version two which is there's a full skirt version and then a gathered skirt and I made the gathered skirt version um, and it says I think I made the size eight because that is just pretty much exactly my measurements 33 26 36 um, and it said you need 2.7 meters of fabric for that and I bought my fabric um, as you'll see the fabric it's a viscose jersey I got it from Minerva and you have to buy in metre um, amounts there so I think I got three metres um, and I didn't need to use um, anywhere near as much of that so I had plenty of this fabric over and I think it's really pretty fabric so I decided to use the leftover fabric and make myself an Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons and here it is um, so um, yeah I, I just thought it's such a lovely wintry colour and I thought a jersey top like this I'll get a lot of wear out of and I'll show you the pattern too um, here it is so this is the Tilly and the Buttons Agnes top 
It's a pattern that's been around for a while and I've made a couple of versions but not for quite a while and I've never made one in a viscose jersey, I've always made in cotton jersey but um, other than being a bit more drapey there wasn't too much difference in terms of sewing with it. Um, so you can make different versions, a quite plain top or you can make one with ruched sleeves here um, or a little ruched front and I thought I might make the ruched front top but actually I made it, um, you can add that on afterwards and I made it, um, the ruching here, and I made it without, and I actually quite like it simple. Um, and I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. I haven't actually got a picture yet, but I'm gonna take a picture today um, and put a picture up of me wearing it. But I really like it, and I think it'll be a really nice and um, basic for my winter wardrobe. And it'll go with jeans or um, maybe like a little skirt or something like that. So I'm really pleased I had enough fabric to be able to use up that fabric. Um, and there's not much left now, so that's great. Um, so that's my second make. Um, and um, I really recommend the Agnes top. It's um, just quite a basic pattern. You can always cut the sleeves off, make it into a t-shirt as well. And it's got quite a nice dip um, around the neck. It's not, I don't find it too deep or too shallow. So I think it's just right like that. And Tilly butt patterns always hold your hand. So um, yeah, that was my second um, pattern um, um, for August. And I'm really pleased with how that turned out. So my next make is actually a multiple make because I've made several versions um, this month, um, not just for me. Um, and I'll show you the pattern, it's this one here. It's the Hudson Pants by True Bias. Um, so I've actually got two versions of this pattern now. This is the one I originally had, which is the ladies um, version. And um, this, is, this is the line drawing, so you can see what the Hudson Pants look like. They're just quite a basic jogger, but they just, I find they fit me really nicely and they're um, really um, fun to sew up. The instructions are good and they sew up really quickly and quite a satisfying make. So I've got a gathered um, waist with elastic, little slash pockets with a little pocket detail here that you can have a bit of fun with a kind of contrasting color. And then um, some, I mean, they kind of quite a slim leg and then cuffs at the bottom. So this is the version I originally bought because I wanted to make some loungewear for me. Um, because I often struggle with shop-bought um, joggers. I love joggers, you know, on an evening um, on the sofa doing some knitting in a comfy pair of joggers. Um, but yeah, shop-bought ones, I struggled to get the fit right, the length of the legs and how it, where it sits around my waist and that sort of thing. So I love to be able to make these because I can make them just how I want them. Um, and then I thought um, my husband might like a pair. So I decided to get the men's Hudson Pants pattern too. And there's the men's, I've got the PDF version of this one. Um, and I thought I'd compare and see how um, different they were. Because I initially thought I could maybe just use the female ones for him too. But I thought, well, um, to be fair to him, I don't often get him many patterns. And I thought maybe he'd prefer to have the, <laughs> the men's ones and know he was wearing something designed for a man um, rather than a woman um, in case there were some differences. So I got that one too. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll talk about um, a little bit about the differences. Um, so the female one, um, a few things I like about the pattern is the leg is quite a slim leg and they have a few details, like the cuff is quite a long cuff, so it's a bit of a feature. Um, the men's one, there's a lot more room in the leg and the cuffs are a bit shorter, um, so they're a bit more of a classic jogger. Um, and I'll show you the pair I made for my husband first. I made his, um, he doesn't, he's not obviously a big fan of anything too bright and so he decided to choose this kind of mild grey um, loop back jersey from Minerva. It's quite nice and cosy and it was really nice to sew with and I've just um, used a black, um, a black cord around the waist and I added on um, these little, um, I can't remember what they're called, these little, um, ooh, what are they called? Know, but I used my prim pliers to attach these things and I'll, I'll see if I can remember what they're called and pop it down below on a caption. Um, so I think that gives it quite like a sort of shop, sort of professional finish. Um, and he didn't want any details and things so I just kept it simple with grey there and grey bottoms. And so yeah, it's quite a shallow little cuff at the bottom. And I'll put a picture of him up, up of him wearing it. And they come out really nicely on him. Um, they're not too tight, he didn't want anything too tight whereas I think the female ones come out a little bit more tight, almost kind of halfway between a standard jogger and a legging. And so I made that pair for him. And then I also used the men's um, pattern to make a pair for my mum. Um, I don't have a picture of my mum wearing them, but I'll put up a picture of the ones I made for her. And I made hers in a fleece back jersey, also for Minerva. My husband wanted something lighter weight, so I used a loop back jersey for him because he gets quite hot quite quickly, so he didn't want anything too snuggly. My mum wanted something to keep her cosy because she does feel the cold. So I bought a fleece back jersey for her and I made her a pair. And she chose for me to make the men's hats and pants for her um, because she likes them a little bit more roomy. And for her, I made an um, adjustment as well. To, um, she prefers them to sit a bit, little bit higher on the waist because they do kind of sit more on the hips. So for her, I um, lengthened um, across here, across the kind of crotch area to give it a little higher waist for her. And I also added a bit more length to the trousers as well. 
And um, so she's really pleased with them and they fit her really nicely. So I've now got two versions of my pattern pieces for the men's pair. One that is more of a standard fit for my husband and one that's a little bit um, tweaked for my mum. Um, and then I also, well their pairs are both quite sort of simple, as you can see, my husband opted for a mild grey, my mum went for a black, um, and I decided to make a more jazzy pair for myself, um, and so I'll show you them, here, yeah, so they're a little bit brighter, <laughs> um, but I quite like fun loungewear, um, so I use this, um, it's a loop back jersey, and it came from the Makers Merchant, um, and I really love it, I think it's such a fun print, and so I decided on my pair, to add a little um, black ribbing for the pocket details, um, a black cord, and then also black um, bottom bits. And so yeah, I really enjoyed sewing up all these Hudson pants. They really don't take long to sew, and I'm not the fastest sewer, so um, they really don't take long to sew, and even me saying that. Um, and then what I decided to do for me is, because I had enough fabric left over, I decided to make myself a matching loungewear set, and I made a top two. <laughs> oh, and I meant to say, um, in terms of construction of the Hudson pants, the uh, men's and uh, women's patterns are virtually identical. So um, yeah, there's, they, they're pretty much constructed in exactly the same way. Um, so it's quite easy switching from one to the other um, and making those, and they really are um, a fun sew. Um, but yeah, just to share a little bit more about my um, loungewear top. So um, I, th I don't know why, I know how much fabric um, is required for these Hudson pants, but I must have been having a mad moment um, because I overordered the fabric. So I was quite pleased I had enough to squeeze the top out of it. Um, so I decided to use this pattern here. It's one of my favourite sweater patterns and it's the Yara sweater by Megan Nielsen. And I love this pattern because it comes with so many different variations. Um, kind of like a standard jumper, um, a dip tem jumper, one with a tie and one with a more of a, um, a feature, um, feature neckline that's a bit more snuggly. Um, so yeah, I've made a couple of versions um, before, but this time I decided to use um, View A, but I hacked it a little bit. Um, so um, yeah, View A is kind of like a standard um, jumper with cuffs, so I added the black cuffs um, to match in with the joggers. Um, but what I decided to do, partly because I didn't have enough fabric um, quite to fit the long version in, and also partly because I thought it would look quite cool and I've got a couple of other jumpers like it, that I like. I decided to make it a little bit shorter, kind of like a cropped jumper. Um, so I'll put a picture up of the full outfit so you can see how the, where the, how the cropping um, falls. Um, so yeah, I had fun with it and I also made it a little bit more, I tapered it in because the Yara is quite roomy and um, it's designed to be kind of a little oversized, but I didn't want this too oversized so I took it in a little bit to make it a little bit more of a snugger fit. So yeah, hope I'll show you the picture. Um, it's just like a really bright and colourful loungewear set. Um, and I just thought it's a bit of fun and it'll brighten up some wintry evenings if I'm wearing that. So I really enjoyed making that one. So I've got um, one more um, sewing make to share with you in this um, part one of my August vlog. Um, and then I've also got a knitting uh, make to share with you, um, which I'm looking forward to sharing too. Um, my last sewing make, I just thought I'd share in case anyone found it interesting. Um, in the UK, um, so um, a few weeks ago, it was made mandatory to wear face coverings um, in any sort of public um, indoor spaces, like shops and that sort of thing. Um, and so um, I just, I've been making a fair few face masks. Um, so you may have already made them, but I thought I'd share the patterns I particularly like in case it was of any use. Um, so we went on holiday to the Isle of Wight um, towards the end of August. And I knew um, while, we were, while we were on holiday, I try not to do too much washing. <laughs> um, quite like to have a break from it. So I decided to make enough masks um, for me and my husband and my two children to last us. So we had one each day for the week. Just, we weren't planning on being a lot indoors. We were mainly went to the beaches and we were outdoors mostly. But just in case we wanted to pop into a shop to get an ice cream or a souvenir, I wanted us all to have face masks um, to be able to uh, go into those shops safely for us and for others. So I thought I'd share the two patterns I've been using. Um, so this um, is the pattern I've been using for me and my husband. And it's the 3D face mask. Um, and on YouTube, there's a tutorial for this face mask. And it's by, I just need to check, Romilda Diaz. Um, and I think it's, um, I'm not sure what language it's been made in, but it's, an, it's, an, it's, an, it's not in English. Um, but it's, it's, I understand it's quite a straightforward um, video to watch if you wanted to watch the video. But I actually um, watched the tutorial on, in, on Instagram TV, which was made by Marie, um, who's the Stitch Odyssey on Instagram. And she does a tutorial showing you how to sew it. Um, and I found it really useful and I really like these masks. So it's kind of, it's kind of um, made out of four um, of these kind of slightly diamond shaped pieces of fabric and two little square fabrics at the end. And it's got like flaps here and I'll show you how you put it on. You kind of put it like this. And so the kind of, there's a main bit here and then like a little nose covering and a chin covering. Um, 
and I find it's quite comfy. Uh, my husband and my mum, I've made some for both of those too, and they really like it too. And it's actually, um, compared to some masks I've made, it's actually quite a satisfying sew. You even get to do a bit of top stitching, which is always fun. Um, so that's the mask I've used um, for us. So I used um, um, scraps of things from other projects. This is um, left over from a dress I made last year. It's quite a nice um, substantial cotton poplin. Um, and um, it's three layers, I added a jersey layer in the middle too. Um, so yeah, it's three layer face mask and it's just quite, um, yeah, comfy to wear. And I use leftover, um, rather than elastic, I use leftover jersey fabric to make these um, ear bits too. And it's quite nice and soft and my children seem to find those quite comfy as well. So that's the first face mask I wanted to share with you. Now that face mask um, only is an adult size, um, but I used a different face mask um, for my children, um, which is the one by Gerata Davies. And I'll put a link down below because she's done a free, um, a free pattern and tutorial on her website. Um, and um, so that's what I use for them. And it comes, her one comes in sizes from I think extra small to large. And the extra small is just the right size for my daughter. And the small is just the right size for my son. So this is, this is it here. Again, it's a three layer mask. It's got two um, cotton layers with a jersey layer in between. Um, and, um, and I've used scraps again. This is my, one for my daughter. Um, and yeah, it just, it just seems to fit them really nicely. I've put up a picture of me and my daughter wearing um, our masks so you can see how they look. But they find them quite comfy, quite easy to put on. They don't mind wearing them. I don't think children under 12 are required to wear face masks um, in, all pub in all public um, areas. But I thought they might prefer to wear them if we're wearing them because it might make them feel a bit more like the same as us. So, so that's that one there. Um, so this one, I, I must admit, I don't find this one as quite as enjoyable to sew as the 3D mask. It's a little bit more fiddly, but it provides a really nice shape for them and it does seem to fit them well. So I've made a fair few just in case we need them. So I'll put the links below. Um, I'll see if I can find the link to the Romelda Diaz tutorial. And I'm not sure if I can put an Instagram TV link below to the um, Stitch Odds too. But I'll try and put as many links below as I can, just in case you're interested in trying these patterns out, because they're the ones that I found are quite comfy. So my final um, make I'm going to share with you in this um, part one of my August Makes vlog is a knitting make. And it's a bit of a fun one. And um, you may have um, seen in my previous um, July Makes um, vlog that I've been working my way through this book here. It's called Knitted Cats and Kittens by Sue Stratford. My mum got it for me, I think for Christmas or my birthday. And it's got lots of um, lovely patterns for different knitted cats and also a couple of mice. Um, I'll show you some of the cats you can make. There's quite a variety. Um, and um, yeah, my children have had fun choosing which ones they wanted me to make. Um, so I've got two to share with you now. And um, the first one is this one here. This is Fluffy Cat. Um, and it's made in kind of like a fluffy sort of woolly wool. Um, I think, I can't remember what the book calls for. Um, it was a tricky wool to find. What does it call for? Um, Angora yarn. Um, now I couldn't find that very easily on, online, but my mum had some, um, I think this is acrylic, fluffy acrylic yarn left over from a cardigan she made my daughter. So she gave me the um, leftovers and it was just enough to make fluffy cats. And then she's got little pink ears, little eyes and a little pink nose. Um, so yeah, and then a kind of a little tail. So she was a lot of fun to make. Um, and yeah, she's fluffy and she's actually, she's supposed to have a little, um, a little um, ribbon around her, um, around her um, neck, but my daughter wasn't very keen on that, so it's been taken off. But yeah, that's Fluffy Cat. And the other one I made is um, Stripey Cat. Um, so yeah, he's like a ginger tom and he's made in sport weight yarn, which seems quite good for toys because it's quite durable. But there is he. Um, so that was one, actually my daughter requested it, but then um, I made it and she wasn't very keen on him. But my son likes him, so he's kind of joined Supercat and their friends. So that's that one. Um, so I really enjoyed knitting from this book because I've learned a few new techniques. Um, I think with um, Fluffy Cat, I learned about, what's it called, wrap and turn, which I hadn't made before, which I haven't used before. So that was quite interesting to learn about that. Um, and they're just quite nice sort of little small um, projects. I kind of enjoy the knitting more than the sewing up um, part. But um, it's nice that my children like them and I've got a couple more um, that I've been working on. So I'll be probably sharing those in my September makes video. And actually um, in my um, part two of my August makes vlog, um, I'm, I've got another knitting project to share. And it's the first um, knitted garment I've ever made for myself. Um, and I'm really pleased with how it turned out and I'm really looking forward to sharing that with you. So please do tune in for part two. Um, and if you haven't done it already, if you click the bell icon below, you should be notified when that vlog is available to view. So um, yeah, thank you so much for watching um, and I hope you've liked my makes and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a great day. Bye bye.